Right, in this series of how to get a 9 in IGCC Maths, we're going to look at a couple of questions sent to me by a student. And in this first question, we have got f of x equals sine x, and it's defined between x is between 180 and 360. That means the domain, the values you put in, are between 180 and 360. And g of x equals cos x is between 0 and 180. Find the range of f of x. Well, let's just go into our old friend Desmos and have a look at the cos and the sine curve. Now, this is the cos curve um, drawn in black, and this is the sine curve drawn in red. Okay, and what you can see is they go on forever if you don't specify what the domain is, what x values to put in. Okay, but if you do specify what x values to put in, so if we take the ones from the question, so we get rid of these graphs. And we just define that the cos curve is just between 0 and 180. So it goes just from 0 to 180. And the sine curve just goes from 180 to 360 like they are in the question. You can see what we draw is very different. Okay, It's limited. Um, and the domain is what you put in. So these are the x values for this cos curve are put in. And the range is what's come out. So the range is between 1 and minus 1 for the cos curve here. And for the sine curve, the range is going to be between 0 and minus 1 between 180 and 360. And if we go back to our question, it asked us to work out the range for f of x, so, this, so our sine curve. So let's go back to our sine curve, and we look at that, and we can see there's our domain between 0 and 360. Okay, I've limited, so not 0 and 360, between 180 and 360. Look, we limited it there. Okay, and the range, if we look down the y values, there are no y values for it here, and then they start at zero and they go all the way to the minus one, and that is all our y values, and that gives us our range. So, our range for f of x, so the range for f of x is that f of x is going to be greater than or equal to minus one and less than or equal to zero. Okay, so our range for f of x is that f of x is greater than or equal to minus 1 and less than or equal to 0. Or you might say minus 1 is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to 0. It's basically between minus 1 and 0. So going on to the next question we got asked is this one. The graph of y equals a minus b cos kt. The values between t is 0 and 120 is shown on the grid. Use the graph to find an estimate for the value of k. So what we need to do, we need to realise what a, b and k do to our graph. So let's again go to our old friend Desmos and we can see I've drawn a equals minus b cos kx. And what I've done is I started off with b is equal to 1, so we get 1 dot of cos x, although it's a minus 1 lot of cos x, I've got a minus here to be the same. And what the minus does, it reflects in the x-axis. Let's just move this so as we go back to our zero. And we've got our k is 1, so we've just got cos x. Now, let's just look at what the a does. And what it does, you can see, is it moves our graph up and down. So the axis that it goes up and down about is whatever our value of a is. So if we go to a is, let's make it 0 0.5 on this graph. You can see our new axis that it goes up and down around is 0 0.5. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to change my y values. So as we can see, a few more y values. And we now, when we, we move this up and down, we can see how if I make this exactly 2, you can see it goes up and down about 2. 2 becomes my new axis. Okay. So the A bit moves the whole graph up and down. And our B bit stretches it like this. Okay, so if you've got a negative, it flips it. And then if you've got a positive, it just makes it that many times taller. So it's now 10 times taller. So let's put it back to 5 and put the A back to 0. And you can see it goes between 5 and minus 5. Okay, because this B has been become 5. So if we go back to our question, we can see that we're going between 100 and 0. So that, um, that means our axis is going to be at 50, and our amplitude, how big it is from our axis, is going to be 50. So our A is going to be 50, and our B is going to be 50. So let's just 
get that on our graph. So let's make um, B50 and let's make our A. Well, I can't make it 50. I'm just going to make it go all the way up to 50. Let's just make that go all the way up to 50. Now, obviously, it's not fitting on my graph, so I'm just going to zoom out so we can see it a bit better. So make our axis go from 0 to 100. So here's our, our graph with the axis going from 0 all the way up to 100. Now we want to make our K change now. And what K does is K squashes it up. So if you make it two times, K is two, you get two times the number of oscillations in the same distance. So normally, by the time we get to 360 here, we would have one oscillation. If we go to K is one, we go to K is one, we got one oscillation before 360. If we go to K is 2, we now have two oscillations by the time we get to 360. So the K factor depends on how many oscillations we're going to fit in by 360. So let's have a look at this one. So we've got a complete oscillation by 90. So one complete one by 90. So by the time we get to 360, we're going to have another three oscillations. That'll be four in total. So our K must equal four because that's is what the number of oscillations we're going to get in by the time we get to 360. So the K must be equal to 4.